stable tuner with something like uh, Google Colab or RunPod, uh, stuff like that. Um, we're going to be utilizing uh, Stable Tuner's UI for this, so you still have to install it using uh, the bat file, as we'll be configuring our sessions for the UI and basically using the RunPods or uh, cloud computing as the engines for the training for people who don't have uh, 3090s in their own rigs. Um, yeah, so let's get started. Um, in this example, I already set up uh, some basic training sessions. So I'm using uh, Stable uh, Diffusion 2.1 base, and I've got set like an output path. Uh, I got some trainer settings here. So that's batch size 24. I, I'm going to be uh, showcasing RunPod for this configuration. Uh, so I can probably put it on something like even 38 because I'm going to be using a 3090 for this. Uh, in terms of the data sets itself, we have uh, there's just the normal stuff, text files, captions, and sampling as well. Uh, I al already put uh, some data in, so it's an artist, and of course the data set is on my computer. I loaded it. Uh, it's uh, basically loading it from my hard drive and once we switch off uh, switch on the cloud training export um, stable tuner will package a small and uh, zipped up session for us to use so let's get started let's just hit export to cloud note that it will still detect if it, you need to regenerate latent cache based on your old settings uh, since I changed from my old settings, uh, the batch size, uh, it also prompted us to do that. Um, that's fine. Once we hit OK for that, and give it a second, we'll get this message, and uh, we can start uh, to get going. So right now, all my settings of things have been exported, including my data, of course into the exports folder and we've got this date and time and the output name which is the new model and we have two files we have payload and we have a notebook uh, we're going to be uploading both into our cloud solution so let me show you now how to set up uh, to use uh, stable tuner in the cloud. Uh, what you want to do is uh, basically decide on a VIG. I'm going to be using 3090 for this. And under select template, select create new template. And we're going to be, I'll just copy paste this. Uh, we're going to be using these settings. just open another tab for this and the settings will be included in the description so you, you don't really need to jump through so many oops and we're going this this template will be used for any future training session so uh, it's just a one-time thing let's give it a name call it stable tuner and I'll name it two because I already have one under con uh, container image we have uh, industrial dietet. I hope I'm not pushing the name, who made a great Docker image for us to use as a base. Um, and we're going to be setting some volume and container sizes. Uh, if you're doing a long session, you might want to boost those up, obviously. Expose HTTP ports to 888. Uh, under environment variables, we want to have two things. So we want to say launch Jupyter true and Jupyter password. Uh, Jupyter password, I just said it's something simple. In this case, I'm going to be using just ST and you will see how it comes into play soon. So let's do save template. Great. So now when we go back to select our server, I can select Stable Tuner 2 and 
and everything obviously will be loaded and let's see if we can get that yeah of course so let's just deploy it normally and now our pod is uh, spinning up so it's going to download some some of the more common things that we need and uh, then we can start actually uh, connecting to to it ready to to actually run our training session so let's connect it once we press connect we will be greeted with this uh, login page and this is where the uh, Jupyter password that we set comes into play uh, it, it you actually need to put it in the token so I'll put an SD in the token which was the Jupyter password uh, that I used in the template and I'm just going to give it some random password, doesn't really matter. Um, and eat login. And we'll be greeted with the usual Jupyter Lab that you're all probably familiar with if you're using RunPod. Alright, so now that we're here, we can go back to our uh, export folder and just drag and drop them. Great. Uh, so as you can see, one of the files is quite large, uh, which is the main payload with all the images and stuff like that. And it's going to take a few minutes to upload. In the meantime, we can start setting up our environment. So every time you uh, generate a new uh, export for the cloud, uh, you'll get this notebook and it will get populated with the correct uh, settings that you used. Um, but you need to set, a, set up the environment for us to actually train. So in this instance, uh, I'm just going to be following the directions, which while our payload is uploading, we can start by running this uh, cell. So we'll install it. And I'm not gonna just uh, waste your time. I'll stop recording here and uh, once the payload is finished, we'll continue. And we finished uploading the payload. So let's run the next cell. It will now unzip all of the training session basically and install any uh, requirements that uh, have been added to uh, Stable Tuner. This way we can keep feature parity between Windows and uh, Linux-based sessions, and making sure that uh, people always have the ability to use the latest and greatest uh, things that are added to the trainer. Uh, and once that's done, all that's left to do is just a train. So this line here is the line that's basically telling it um, what to do. These are all our settings uh, that we use sta Stable Tuner for um, just conveniently in one line but made uh, easy. So if we were to, uh, to decide that we want to actually change uh, something, I don't know, maybe we ran out, to, uh, out of memory and we need to decrease batch size, we don't need to actually upload the entire payload. All we do is go into Stable Tuner, change what we want to change. In this case, let's just say I want to do 13. And we can just right click on the, on the training start button or the export for cloud and copy trainer command for Linux. Um, once that's done, it, it will give us a new command which we can just copy paste here and if we look this is our batch size that we just changed and it changed here so we can start training again with this new line but uh, for now just let, uh, the settings that I used are already good enough for this card or should be as you can see right now it's downloading the model that we chose which is uh, stable diffusion uh, 2.1 if it was a checkpoint that we converted or a local model, um, they would also get packaged into this and be used 
by the trainer here instead. Um, but since this is hosted on Hugging Face, there's no real reason to increase the size of our payload, so we'll just download it as we train. And ideally, the server that we use will have quick enough internet to do it. And that's about it. Now we just it will train. Uh, it will save outputs uh, into the output folder, uh, including um, samples you can view. If you set up Telegram, uh, you will get messages uh, with images of the training session. And yeah, that's about it for Runpod. We are just training here now. Um, so now that we watched uh, how we do it on Runpod, uh, it's basically the same deal with uh, Colab. Um, so I won't actually go into Colab. But what you want to do is uh, open notebook, upload, and we'll select our notebook. It will open up a new Colab with the notebook. Just uh, once you connect to the runtime, drag and drop uh, the payload here. Uh, basically, do the entire thing again. Uh, just run these cells one after the other, this after it finishes, and you're good to go. In the case of Colab, because we're using it, uh, if you're using the feature, um, you're going to be using uh, the T4 GPUs. Uh, I suggest using uh, quite a low batch size. I, the most I got was uh, 2 on 512 resolution. Uh, so keep that in mind as you train here. Um, yeah, but that's about it. And I just want to thank uh, Industria Dietat and ENT Mike uh, on Discord for helping me uh, with making the Docker images and uh, getting some of the commands. and just being general good good folks. Uh, I encourage everyone to join the Discord. Uh, I hang out there. You'll be able to uh, see when things are getting updated, get help, just chat, hang around. And uh, yeah, that's about it. So cheers. <laughs>